Okay, so, make sure I don't have any coffee grounds in my teeth. Just want to get in the habit of making a video every day, just answering one question. Keep it simple. When you keep it all in your mind, you don't have a solid grasp on what you really think. It's, it takes effort to carve your thoughts out of the ether on a specific subject, and I'd like to do that. Every morning I'll read for about 30 minutes, an hour maybe, take notes, and then write a reflection on my life uh, based on that new information. And that usually lends myself to some epiphanies. In this case, this morning, I was thinking about how next weekend I'm doing a jiu-jitsu tournament the morning after a concert. And, I mean, it'll be my first time ever doing that. And this weekend, it seems like I'm facing a tsunami. And so I thought to myself, how can I coax my subconscious into being calm about this whole weekend, this whole situation where I'm going to have two very large stressors? I'm not sure how I'm going to feel. I imagine I'll feel some anxiety, some stress, just like with every jiu-jitsu uh, competition. And uh, I really want to do well, so there's added pressure. So I'm going to be working really hard on getting that ready for the show. And um, all that stuff and the buildup for the week is going to be a dialogue with my subconscious that I am going to need to overcome. And even better, I would like to create an empowering frame in my subconscious. And uh, so I think today's meditation is how can I control the dialogue with my subconscious? I think this is something that you work on for a long time. We spend our lives trying to understand our subconscious. Most of us spend it avoiding our subconscious uh, understanding at all costs because it's scary. I am starting to believe that self-development and self-realization and, you know, uh, mental health, let's say therapy or mental health recovery is really about understanding your subconscious and developing a, an empowering relationship with your subconscious. Like the more that I allow my subconscious to give me weakening dialogue, the, the worse my depression gets, the stronger my anxiety gets, the more I start to feel worried about things. When you control the narrative in your mind and you start to uh, become aware of your subconscious narrative, then you can manipulate it. You can start to direct the conversation. If you ever feel at odds with yourself, your inner voice is arguing with you or telling you to do things that aren't in line with what you believe your values are. When you notice that, that's your opportunity to catch it and stop it. Imagine you're in a meeting with your boss and you're asking your boss for a raise and you feel like your boss is telling you that you're not doing a good job at work, you're showing up late and you're distracting others and uh, you know, you're just not worth a raise. But none of those things seem true to you. You don't show up late you're exceeding in, in your work at the top of your uh, group, tell your manager, hey, wait, 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 these things you're saying, um, can you show me how, some examples, some specific examples of when I was late? Because if someone's speaking to you unfairly and you continue that conversation, you're confirming their version of reality. The same with your inner voice. If you're having a conversation with yourself and you're at odds, let's say you know that you want to be eating healthy, but your subconscious says, go get some ice cream. What is that? Why does that happen? That's not you, right? Because the you, the you want to be, knows that you want to eat healthy and knows the benefit of eating healthy and knows the importance of it and wants to, to uh, experience what it's like to eat healthy. But yet there's this other voice that tells you, just go get the ice cream. You need sugar. You want something right now. What is that? Why, do you, why are you at odds with yourself? That's not happening on, any, on the TV. That's happening inside. When you notice it, that's your opportunity. That's you being on top of the situation, watching both voices. And uh, when you're not just the voice who you're arguing with, but you're the, the one on top of the situation, now you can say, hey, wait, I don't like what's going on here. You guys are at odds. Let's get on the same page. And that's, that's taking control of your subconscious narrative. When you take control of your subconscious narrative, you align yourself with your highest ideal because you're no longer arguing. You're no longer negotiating with yourself. I don't want to argue with myself. I want to be on the same page.
when I noticed this happening to me recently, just days ago, I literally prayed to God. I said, God, I want to be on the same page because God uh, is giving me the vision of my highest purpose, my potential, and that's what creates my desire. And uh, my subconscious, when it's at odds with me, is what's holding me back. So I prayed, you know, God, give me clarity. Allow me to be in line with your vision for my life and allow me to never stray from observing you in my life. And uh, that helped give me clarity. That helped me real realize that I'm not at odds with myself. I do have a singular purpose. And my uh, focus, once again, be, uh, came to my vision and my true reality. And you have a true nature. When you're at odds with yourself, you're battling your true nature. So those moments when you notice, when you become aware, use that. Use your awareness as a tool, a sifting tool. You notice a flaw in your thinking, your thought process, you notice a negative thought pattern, grab it. Sift through your thoughts. Every time you get you snag on a negative one, stop, pull it out. Pull out the weed, throw it away, and keep sifting. In my case, my subconscious narrative cannot be that these two situations are stressful. They, they cannot be overwhelming. In my subconscious, I need to frame each one of these two situations as everyday activities that I'm looking forward to and that I'm prepared for. Um, you don't know what the future is going to bring anyway. So even if you prepare, you might not be prepared. Faith allows you to be prepared even when you're unprepared because faith says I am capable and God is giving me my experience, whatever, whoever God is to you. God is pre presenting me this experience and I am capable in the moment. I'm never going to be caught in a 100 foot wave um, because God is directing my life. And that's what faith is. You're putting your life in the hands of God. You're believing. You don't worry about the future because it doesn't really exist. You don't know what it is. You prepare, but you don't see. Same as the past. If you look into the past, even yesterday, how fleeting those memories are, how elusive each one seems to be as you grasp for it. Think about how accurate it really, your memory really is. You'll find that the past is always changing. Not every detail is important to remember. Therefore, your idea of the past is fractional. So the past doesn't exist, not the way you think it does. And the future doesn't exist because you're not sure you're even gonna get there. So in this moment right now is where you must place your faith that this experience is what God is giving, giving you, the universe is giving you. And in this moment, you are correct because you are here. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you're doing, what, you're, what you think you're doing. You're here. You're breathing right now. Your heart is beating. Therefore, you are. You didn't choose it, so it's not your fault. When you focus on the present moment and you believe, it gives you a, a certain uh, probability that you're going to have faith in the future when those big things do come. You know, I did a jiu-jitsu tournament in September. I practiced this uh, mindfulness, this presentness leading up to the event. Being in the moment and having faith that I'm going to show up and be ready. And no matter what the outcome, so long as you're walking in faith every day, you know that God is with you. You know that the universe is holding you in the right place, win or lose. So you just show up in faith and you plan on being present and enjoying life, even pain. Enjoy the fact that you're here. If you lose at something, at worst it means you underprepared. And yes, that's your fault. And yes, that's a mistake. And maybe there's consequences. But even if there's consequences, at least you're having the experience. At least you are living. So have faith. Take joy and delight in, in life, even in pain, and show up every day.
Be ready to live the best day of your life, even if you're facing a monster. Embrace your experience, don't shy away from it. If you have a challenge, if you have a goal, an obstacle in your way, embrace the challenge. God is giving you this challenge. God is giving you this experience. Don't shy away from it. That's it. Those are my thoughts. Mindfulness will get you through any obstacle, even a huge giant, even two. But I know that by doing my best every day and living like this is my last day here, I am setting myself up for glory, whether I live or die. In order to do that, you have to have faith in God. You have to have faith that your, that your reality is based on, a, a, based on something other than yourself because you didn't choose to wake up. It doesn't matter if you believe in God or not. You didn't choose to wake up. You just fucking woke up. You went to sleep thinking you were going to wake up. But what if you didn't? Did you autonomously sit, say brain on and, and then initiate your day? No. You fucking just woke up. So whether you believe in God or not, you are being divined by something. You're being animated and reanimated. Follow the direction of your greatest desire not in your smallest desire people who follow the flow toward their smallest desires end up playing video games doing drugs having cheap sex um, and eating cheap food follow the flow of life toward their greatest desires their most noble desires you know what that is ask yourself Ask your soul, close your eyes and ask yourself, what is my greatest desire? What have I always wanted? What do I want more than anything? What am I willing to die for? What am I willing to be nailed to a cross for? If you can't find that thing, find the closest thing to it and start going after that with all your might. Eventually you will find the right thing. The flow of life, the river of life will take you to it. But you need to aim at your highest ideal outcome your greatest desire. If you're going to live, well, why? Like you need a reason. For me, when I was going through my depression at the worst time and was feeling suicidal, like I didn't have a lifelong reason to live. And I needed to find one, I needed to pick one. I think that everyone needs something. Everyone needs a lifelong reason to live. If your eternal status is not your reason, if you don't believe in an eternal status, then you need some galvanizing reason. You need a reason to be. You need to find meaning in your life and a lifelong meaning, something that's going to last the rest of your life. Otherwise, you won't live. You'll kill yourself. You know, you'll do something. You'll, you'll find a way to die. You'll waste away. How do you control your subconscious narrative? How do you direct your conversation with your subconscious? How do you stay in control of the narrative? Be aware of it. Pay attention to what you're saying to yourself. Don't let yourself get away with uh, being small, being weak, because that's not you. That's not the real you. That's maybe your ego telling you that you deserve less. That's your ego telling you that you deserve more or you don't, uh, um, that you're better than others. Whatever it is, whatever your excuse, you um, are only hurting yourself. And by being at odds with yourself, you're wasting your life. Uh, so much of a better version of yourself, and you know it. Stop being at odds with yourself. Stop talking down to yourself. That's, that's not helping you. Stop uh, telling yourself to do bad things. Stop telling yourself that it's okay to eat junk food. Stop telling yourself that it's okay to do drugs. Stop telling yourself that it's okay to have sex with anybody. There's no consequences. Because it's not true. You know it. You know better. Listen to the version of you that's pointing you toward a better ideal, a more, a greater potential. The version of you you always should have been. The version of you you've always wanted to be. You can still be that. It's all up here. You can change in an instant. It's all about the inner voice, the inner conversation. Realign yourself. Become one with yourself again. Stop negotiating with your subconscious get on the same page and you will be able to overcome any giant in your way 
I hope you have a great rest of your day or night. And uh, I'm gonna do some more work on the computer, work on my Neon Dream set, and go to jujitsu, and then hang out with my girlfriend afterward. And um, that'll be my day. So we'll do this all again tomorrow, Lord willing. Thank you for watching. Follow me online, wherever. If you have any questions, you'd like me to cover anything else. If you uh, think anything specific about this, yeah, I'd just love to hear from you, you know. We're all people, and um, most likely, you and I are not too unlike one another. So it'd be great to hear from you, and uh, we're connected already. So don't be afraid to reach out. Thank you. Peace out.